In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of yield. You've probably heard the word before. You probably think of a traffic sign, a yield sign, when you think of yield. It means slow down and watch for oncoming traffic. But in chemistry, yield means something different. So yield is the amount of product made in a chemical reaction. It's how much you made, how much you yielded. And there's three types of yield. There's the actual yield. That's what you actually get in the lab when the chemicals are mixed and you weigh it on a scale. There's the theoretical yield. This is what the balance equation tells you should have been made according to the math. And then there's the percent yield. And the percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And that basically tells you how good you were, how close did you get to what you were supposed to get according to the math. So how do you find these yields? The actual yield is what you get from the word problem. They'll tell you in the word problem what was made, or in the lab, it's what you weigh on a scale. The theoretical yield, you get this from the stoichiometry problem that you do. You have to do the math to get your theoretical yield. And the percent yield you get from the formula that we just talked about. So here's an example yield question. 6.78 6 grams of copper is produced when 3.92 grams of aluminum are reacted with excess copper 2 sulfate. Go ahead and see if you can try to solve this, or not solve, but write this equation out before we work on the yield. Okay, here is what the equation looks like. The aluminum reacts with the copper sulfate to make copper and aluminum sulfate. I hope you remember to write your charges and crisscross and then balanced when you are done. If not, um, you have no chance of getting this problem correct. Um, you better hope that you get a, a question that's already balanced for you. Okay, but now that we have the balanced equation in front of us, let's go ahead and try to figure out these three types of yield. We have actual, theoretical, and percent yield that we need to uh, solve for or answer. So the actual yield comes right from the problem. It said that 6.78 grams was actually produced. This is what the scale said. So that is our actual yield. Next, we need to do our theoretical yield. And this is the one you need to do some work for. You need to do a stoichiometric conversion. If 3.92 grams of aluminum are reacted, we want to know in theory how much copper should we have made. We got this much, but I want to know theoretically how much should we have made. Okay, so let's set it up. 3.92 grams of aluminum, step number one is to convert to moles of aluminum. In one mole of aluminum, you have 27 grams of aluminum. Next, we want to do our mole-mole ratio to convert away from aluminum and turn it into moles of copper. And then the last step is to convert to grams of copper. So in one mole of copper, there are 64 grams of copper. Cross off everything above and below like you should to Clarify or remind yourself that you are solving for grams of copper. If it's set up correctly, you are ready to um, punch these numbers into your calculator. 3.92 divided by 27 times 3 divided by 2 times 64 is 13.9 grams. So in theory, if I reacted this much aluminum uh, with the excess of copper 2 sulfate, in a perfect world, I should have made 13.9 grams of copper. That is my theoretical yield. So we'll plug that in there. And then the percent yield. This is just a comparison of the two. We need to do our actual yield divided by our theoretical yield times 100. So our actual yield is the 6.78 grams. Our theoretical yield is the 13.9 grams. Um, divide those numbers and multiply by 100, and we get 48.8%. So how did we do here? 48.8% is our percent yield. What this actually tells us is how efficient a reaction is, or how efficient the, the laboratory student is. But 48.8 actually isn't that bad. A percent yield can never be bigger than 100%, and it's usually never even close to 100%. The theoretical yield will always be larger than the actual yield, and there's some reasons for this. Number one is impure reactants. Uh, especially in the high school lab, the grade of chemicals that we're working with is not as high as something like a chemical engineer would be working with. So there might be some impurities that are affecting our reaction that are making it not as efficient as it possibly could be. 
We also have competing side reactions that happen sometimes. Think of a double replacement reaction. If we were trying to calculate the percent yield for the precipitate in the double replacement reaction, we have the other competing side reaction that's making the aqueous products that uh, aren't really what we're looking for, but it's taking energy away from the reaction and, and it could be leading to a lower uh, percent yield. You also have a loss of product that can happen when you're filtering or transferring between containers. You do the reaction in one chamber and filter it in another, you may lose some product or it might not all come out of the, the beaker. There can be measuring error, errors. Um, you know, This is up to you and, and how accurate your equipment is that you're measuring your products with. And this could lead to differences in the numbers. So in summary here, the percent yield tells you how much product you made compared to how much you should have made. It basically tells you how good you were at doing the reaction or how efficient that reaction was. The percent yield formula is given here. You need to um, know it and know how to use it. And um, remember, your percent yield can never be higher than 100% due to things like impure reactants, competing side reactions, and human error.